Amphibians are fascinating creatures and familiar to anyone who's played in the shallows of a lake or marsh as a kid, or turned over logs in the forest. Even if you haven't encountered frogs or salamanders up close, it's difficult to miss the course of Pacific tree frogs if you live in a natural area on the west coast of North America. Their calls are harbingers of spring every year. Unfortunately, amphibians have also been harbingers of environmental problems and biodiversity loss around the world. Starting in the 1970s, researchers noticed frog populations declining and species disappearing. Amphibian species ranges have been shrinking ever since, even in relatively wild places like Vancouver Island in British Columbia. This has led conservationists to seek ways to address threats and prevent further population declines. Local residents call me the frog lady, and when I meet them at the grocery store or on the street, they often ask, how are the frogs doing? When I started working on amphibians 20 years ago, I had to respond, not very well, because I knew that some of their habitat was within proposed logging cut blocks, the arrival of an invasive species was looming, and thousands of frogs and salamanders were getting killed crossing the highway between Tofino and Ukula each year. Two decades later, I can answer, they're doing much better because we're doing a better job of protecting their habitat and mitigating some of the threats to the amphibians. Much of this work has been done by the Wetland Stewards for Clackwood and Barclay Sounds, a charitable nonprofit organization, with support from government agencies, other ENGOs, university researchers and students, and local community members. We've been able to monitor populations and take action. Our actions help fulfill the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, which is a global effort to achieve a better and more sustainable future for all. In simple terms, the Sustainable Development Goals provide a to-do list put together by world leaders from all United Nations member states in 2015. They agreed on 17 goals that provide a shared blueprint for peace and prosperity for all people and the planet by 2030. Our work fits several of the targets under the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal number 15, protecting life on land. For many years, we have surveyed the local breeding populations of northern red-legged frogs, a species that's listed under the Federal Species at Risk Act. Based on finding significant numbers, the BC Ministry of Environment designated three new wildlife habitat areas for northern red-legged frogs in our region. These make up a total of 64 hectares of wetlands and surrounding forest protected from logging and road building. We've also been vigilant for another key threat. The introduced bullfrog is a predator and a competitor of native frogs and causes declines. It hasn't spread to the west side of the island, at least not yet, and we're hoping it never does. The wetland stewards remind people not to take tadpoles or frog from the wild and move them around. Certainly our most prominent actions have been to reduce road mortality and connect habitats bisected by roads. We started by surveying the highway to find out where frogs and salamanders were being killed. Then in 2011, the wetland stewards collaborated with the BC Ministry of Transportation to install the first wildlife culvert in the peak crossing area. This year, Parks Canada is increasing the survival of amphibians crossing the highway in Pacific Rim National Park Reserve by installing three more crossing structures. This involves painstaking work. You don't just stick any old culvert in the highway and call it done. They have to be carefully positioned, high enough in the roadbed to provide enough hopping headroom for the frogs, and the bottom needs to be filled with the right mix of organic and inorganic material to keep the soil moist and provide good drainage. Logs and branches provide hiding spaces for amphibians to avoid larger predators. Mink, marten and ermine, they will all use the culverts in addition to the frogs and salamanders. We also had to figure out effective fencing to guide frogs and salamanders to the culverts while keeping them off the road. We 
use wildlife cameras to monitor the movements of frogs and salamanders and other animals through the culverts. You have to look really carefully for the eye shine of the amphibians in order to see them as they're passing through the culvert. Images we collect show that the culverts are being used not only by the amphibians, but by larger animals as well. The wetland stewards collaborate and share what we learn with others to help integrate ecosystems and biodiversity values into planning and mitigation locally and across the province. We're happy to be working alongside governments, businesses, civil society and the general public who are all using the Sustainable Development Goals as a tool to work together to build a better future for everyone, including the frogs.